Hello, uh, my name is Marcela Carvajal. I'm an MPH epidemiology uh, candidate at the University of Nebraska Medical Center, College of Public Health. Um, the study <laughs> that uh, Mariela was referring before is the assessment of knowledge and beliefs towards HPV vaccination among mothers of Mexican origin in Nebraska and neighboring states. So basically pretty similar to the study that uh, Mariela did in Veracruz. Um, the human papillomavirus is a human carcinogen which makes it a public health concern. It is also a most common, the most common uh, sexually transmitted infection in the United States. And according to the CDC, uh, about 79 million Americans are currently infected with the HPV. Additionally, about 39, um, 800 um, HPV associated cancers occur in, in the United States each year. Some of the cancers with more incidence are cervical, vulvar, vaginal, and penile cancers. Uh, about 17% of the population in the United States are, are of um, Hispanic origin, and from this uh, group of Hispanics, about 65% are of Mexican origin. We can see here in the graph um, that in Midwest, in the last, um, we'll say, last 10 years, the uh, Hispanic population have been increasing rapidly. Um, in Nebraska, about 11% of the uh, population are of uh, Hispanic origin. And in Iowa, about 6%. And in, the, in this graph, we can see that most of the Hispanics in each one of the places are of Mexican origin. So Hispanic wo uh, women in the United States have a higher um, have higher rates of cervical cancer than women in other ra racial or ethnic groups, and some studies with the Hispanic population uh, have shown that women knowledge about HPV and HPV vaccination is uh, very low. In, even though when um, Latinas um, uh, the HPV vaccine population rates are highest for Latinas, the um, HPV vaccination rates continue below all the recommended vaccines and below the Healthy People 2020 vaccination goal, which is 80%. So the vaccine um, that is targeting HPV, um, targeting HPV 16, 18, which are the most associated with uh, cervical cancer, um, prevents about 24,000 um, 24, cases of cancer every year. Uh, and vaccines are recommended for uh, preteens, girls, and boys uh, between 11 and 12 years. There's two doses of the vaccine that should be given to them. After 2016, they change from three doses to two doses because it's um, they determine if that is effective. In this slide, what I want to show is that uh, HPV vaccination coverage continues to lag behind other vaccination coverage, even though it has been increasing the coverage, but it's still behind. So uh, I wanted to assess the knowledge and beliefs of uh, Mexican mothers uh, here in Midwest about HPV uh, vaccination. And for that, uh, I conducted a cross-sectional survey. Uh, some of the, the inclusion criteria were that they, they need to be mother of Mexican origin living in Nebraska or neighboring states, uh, um, older than 19, and have a daughter or son, or a daughter and a son between 9 and 18 years of age, living with them. So for the sampling, through a partnership between the University of Nebraska Medical Center and one world community uh, health centers, uh, a convenient sampling was performed in the Mexican consulate where one world community health centers provide health services. A hundred participants were able to be recruited and um, I developed the IRB that was approved, of course, to start the study. So for data collection, 
So the survey uh, had 76 uh, questions. It, uh, it differed from Mariela with demographics, because I um, had some um, more questions about immigration. Um, so the recruitment started on June the 19th, and after we started, because the initial idea was to include um, mother of Mexican origin living in Nebraska. But after I started doing the surveys, I find out that uh, a lot of people come from other states other than Nebraska, so we had to do a change in inclusion criteria, include uh, Nebraska and neighboring states. So basic, basically it's Nebraska and Iowa. Uh, I finished the recruitment on July 28th. A um, hundred surveys were conducted, and most of the surveys were conducted in Spanish. I was able to um, ask them what was the language or, or in what language they prefer the, the survey, and most of them said in Spanish is better. Uh, afterwards, I did a data entry, preliminary results using SPSS and SAP, and um, for next uh, steps, uh, we're going to do, I'm going to do further data analysis. We're going to do the comparison between the study in Veracruz, Mexico, and in the study here in Nebraska. Uh, the idea is to have a publication. So this is the survey. This, uh, uh, it has um, four parts. So we, so we don't, uh, I have here a copy of the survey. You can check it, so I don't have to talk about <laughs> Um, this is the site, it's one World Community Health Center, the, the Ventanilla de Salud, or health window, that is inside the Mexican consulate. Basically what they do is uh, health education, and they um, have some like tests of um, a glucose, a BMI, the blood pressure, very basic, uh, but they're strong in providing health education. So here the picture with the coordinators of the health window. And this is how it looks the Mexican consulate here in Omaha that attends uh, mostly uh, Mexicans and um, they come basically from Nebraska and Iowa. So here I have some preliminary results. Um, the mean age of the mothers were 40. Uh, the mean uh, people in the household was Five, the age, the mean age of the oldest son in the nine, 18 years age range was 14, and the age of the daughter was 13, the mean age. So I was able to have like a group of people, uh, mothers that had at least one daughter and one son in that range, um, age range. 35 uh, mothers that had at least one daughter and 35 mothers that had at least one son. It was randomly, so I didn't, um, um, okay. So for demographic information, most of the people were from Nebraska. Most of them in married. Uh, married with uh, their partner were basically from Mexico, 87% uh, with low educational, low level of education. Um, half of the participants were homemakers and most of them didn't have health insurance. So here is like a list of the statements that we included in the survey. Uh, it was interesting for him. Uh, here I have the list of the statements. Here is the right question, the correct question, the correct answer, I'm sorry. And here is the percentage that answer right to that question. So we, we just three people um, say that HPV um, cannot be detected by pap smears. Most of them didn't know or they say yes. Um, also, just 20 people say that HPV can cause cancer of penis, and it, um, just nine people say that HPV vaccine is expensive, and 23 uh, person said that there is a cure for HPV. It's also 
interesting that less than half of them said that HPV aff um, aff um, affects uh, only females, that no, on no affects only females. So I run like high square for some of the variables with level of education. It was interesting here that uh, women with high education, level of education were most likely to say that they wouldn't vac um, vaccinate their children if there were a vaccine to prevent the common cold. Um, HPV vaccine awareness among mothers of Mexican origin. So 75% said that they have heard about HPV vaccine. Most of them said that they have heard from medical uh, providers. A low percentage said that they have heard from child school. And it looked like, like they don't talk much about the topic with relatives and friends. When we ask if your children are not vaccinated against HPV, what is the reason your child did not get the vaccine? So they said, because there's not enough information to make a decision, or it was not offered. So 72% um, of the mothers uh, said that some didn't complete the vaccine series. And from this percentage, they said that they're not willing to give the, they're not planning to give the vaccine, the HPV vaccine to the son. So they, they haven't completed and they don't want to finish it. And for the, the 63 person said that the daughter was, didn't complete the HPV vaccine series and 41 person is not planning to give the vaccine. So we still see some difference here that is higher for sons than for daughters. Well, uh, I learned, um, I mean, this is a really good learning experience. You learn more than you think, and I think I strengthened a lot the public health promotion skills. Uh, I, additionally to what I did for collecting information, providing uh, information about HPV, HPV vaccination, I supported another regular activities that they have at the health window. Uh, but uh, mostly in cancer, HPV, and HPV vaccination, and other topics. I strengthened uh, competencies in public health and epidemiologic research, has learning about the epidemiology of cancer and, and cancer research, um, developing from zero a uh, questionnaire that we, um, we build it based on other studies. So and applying to a multicultural community, because um, I'm Hispanic, but I'm no Mexican, so we still have a lot of things different. The way that I speak, or some words that I use, might mean something different to them. So it was very interesting. Here are some pictures of the additional activities that I was doing. Here is, um, well, usually they, uh, like users of the consul Mexican consulate, they come and they wait for a long time for the paperwork. So you're able to provide health education to the group of people that you see here. Like Mondays and Friday are the, the moments where all the room will be full, which is really good. Sometimes it's a little uncomfortable because they come with the kids and maybe, right? But this is still a good way to provide health information. Here are some more pictures about the place. And the hell window is, is a small place, but still you can um, provide information and, and support these activities. For future uh, research, um, uh, it will be interesting to develop a mixed methods or qualitative study with mothers to understand in detail concerns about getting their adolescents the HPV vaccine. Mm, also assess the influence of culture in vaccine acceptance and uptake. Also, it will be interesting to see, well, evaluate the language limitations between health provider and patient and the effect that it, this can have on getting information about vaccine and treatments. 
strengths and li uh, limitations of the research side. I think uh, one of the uh, strengths is that a, a, a good number of um, Mexicans, if you want to do a research among Mexicans, it will be a good place because it, it doesn't have the bias that is a clinic that you will think that in the clinic they will be more of them will be most of them will be vaccinated, but this is like a random sample of, and they come from all parts of Nebraska and from Iowa, so I think it's is one of the strengths. Another strength is that um, they have a lot of time uh, available, so I was able to conduct my um, survey like an interview. So I used to sit uh, with them for 30 minutes. I said in the, uh, the survey will take about 10 minutes, but it will take me like about 30 minutes because I will have to do um, education afterwards. So. That was really, really important experience. Um, about limitation, the, init the initial paperwork to do like uh, the, the research in the place, it took longer than I was expecting. And the refusal rate, I didn't talk about that, but uh, I wasn't expecting refusal rate because, you know, I say, ah, oh, his spines are nice. You're going to say, well, I'll help you, you're a student, come on. <laughs> but no, most, um, 24 person was the refusal rate. So from 132 uh, participants that I approached and that they told me um, I, I meet the inclusion criteria, 32 told me, no, I'm not interested in participating. It was interesting because, uh, I, I don't know, um, most of them were with their husband and they look at the husband like, can I? Or something like that. So it's just like, there's a still, I don't go into go into that. <laughs> but yeah, it was interesting. Uh, for future career goals, I want to do a lot of things, but um, I would like to keep updating my logic in public health and in, in, in epidemiology. I'm still thinking about maybe a PhD or, but I like to work a lot in the field, so. I'm just um, trying to decide. Uh, I want to learn new techniques to allow me to improve my competencies in epidemiology, like in GIS, advanced data analysis. Um, I like infectious diseases. Uh, I, I come from a, a country that have a lot of tropical diseases. Uh, I'm from Colombia, so I, I would like to be more uh, to be expert in this area and be able to travel around Latin America and work with different communities. And rural communities is something that uh, I would like to be able to work with. Keep improving my English as my second language, because uh, it's still, you know, and learn, and learn an additional language. I would like to learn French afterwards. Um, and ideally work with the WHO, the PAHO, or the CDC, that will be wonderful. Um, another uh, goals, but I think that's it for now. Thank you, Marcella. Questions, comments for Marcella? I was curious um, about your finding about the, that women, or sorry, parents were um, less likely to answer that they'd have their boys vaccinated than girls, and I was wondering um, if you had any ideas about why why that was, like why they would have their sons vaccinated but not their daughters. Where, where was the, this slide? It was, it was a, I think it was your, it was like a line graph. That one. That yep. <laughs> I thought that was really interesting, and I didn't know if you just had any anecdotal. Well, the question was if the daughter did complete the HPV vaccine series, and from the total of, of people that said just 63% of them have not completed the series, 41% uh, said, no, I'm not willing to give the other vaccine. But it was more the percentage of people that they were in were not willing to give the vaccine to the son. So I think there is like, sons, uh, I mean, 
You know that in 2006 the vaccine was for girls, and then it was 2011 that was general for males, for boys. So it's still in, in the culture we have the idea that the vaccine is just for girls, or the cancer is just, I mean, we are with the, with the, all the way, like, we're the bad of the story, right? <laughs> so, I mean, it makes sense to me that still people are more willing to vaccinate daughters than sons. I don't know if I changed the, the question. <laughs> okay. But it's still here that uh, sons are, yeah, it's higher the percentage that that say that uh, some didn't complete the HPV vaccine series. Questions, comments? Uh, I, I find it interesting that you have a very high attendance at the Mexican consulate. Uh, I lived for 35 years in Houston has a very big Mexican consulate and my experience with them is that uh, those Mexican citizens who visit the consulate have either lost their passport, they've got a visa problem, but they're all documented. More than 50% of the Hispanics in Houston are undocumented and so it creates a huge bias if we did the study there. Maybe in Omaha, there are either fewer undocumented uh, uh, Mexicans um, or they're not fearsome that uh, the INS is going to clamp down on them. Uh, I just don't know what the difference is. I think this is a, a very unique opportunity here in Omaha uh, that we wouldn't see in Houston. Well, actually, um, this is the first study with the uh, between the college and the Mexican consulate, and the, the, well, the consul said that it would be nice to keep going and strengthening the relationships between both. Other thing that I, uh, what you mentioned is that um, one of the things that I thought the refusal rate was because people were afraid to give more information, but if they are doing um, paperwork for their documents, it does Sense, right? Yeah. So, but it's interesting, yes. I was just going to add to that. In uh, Phoenix and Tucson, through the College of Public Health in Arizona, we have the Ventimilla de Salud and they do a mobile health unit. So maybe that could be a future project in Arizona, or if they have them in other a couple other cities too, following with what you did, going, because we go out into the community, we do go to the Mexican consulate also. But they go out into different areas of South Tucson, and I don't really know exactly where they go in Phoenix, just because I'm not based in Tucson. But yes, and the thing with the, Me the Mexican consulate is that they have the hell window in each Mexican consulate. It's not just here in Omaha. So here is with one more community health centers, but in other places, uh, well, they have other collaborators. But that's the idea. Even in Canada, they have these um, hell window. Okay, thank you, Marcella.